Under the inspiration of Mrs. Karen McKinney, the George E. Peters Adventist School National Junior Honor Society chapter was established in August 2004. The first induction ceremony with nine inductees was held on February 27, 2005. The G.E. Peters chapter set the standard for Allegheny East Conference schools by being the first school to establish a NJHS chapter. The mission of the G.E. Peters chapter is to recognize outstanding students and to emphasize the importance of becoming a servant to mankind. To date, this chapter has inducted almost 80 students to the National Junior Honor Society. Our former members continue to excel in higher levels of educational pursuits, which include leadership positions and services provided to their communities. Today, we will induct the 17 newest members to our chapter of the National Junior Honor Society. We are overwhelmed by the love and support we have received from God, our parents, teachers, family members, and friends. You have helped us persevere through it all. For this and so much more, we say thank you. Welcome to the 16th Annual George E. Peters Adventist School National Junior Honor Society Induction Ceremony. Please bow your heads and close your eyes for opening prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for allowing us to see another day. Thank you for being a graceful and merciful God. Thank you for looking out for us. As we induct new members to the NJHS, please help that this program goes smoothly and there is no interruption or any difficulty. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Our scripture reading is taken from James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Hello everyone, today I will talk to you about perseverance. Perseverance is pushing through something for what you need despite every obstacle. For example, this past year and a half, my biggest obstacle was distance learning. I really dislike learning via Zoom and I found it to be challenging. But in spite of all the obstacles, I persevered and now I am being inducted into the National Junior Honor Society. During this past year, I've learned that life sometimes does not go the way we expected or anticipated, and I had to learn to push through those obstacles in my way. And whenever I felt like giving up, my mom would be there to encourage me and push me because she knows the potential that I have if I just persevere. So to everyone, I say don't give up. You've come this far. Keep going. Keep persevering. Let no one stop you from your goals, and hopefully I can always remember this when certain situations try to stop me from reaching my goals. Perseverance is something that is strongly needed right now, and we all have it in us, we just need to figure out how to tap into it. Right now, looking at the world, a lot of people can be discouraged because of what we see on the news or on social media. The things that we see are scary, but the one thing that we have been able to do through this rough time is persevere. Instead of giving up, we continue to make a change in society and we continue to fight for our rights. And you have that perseverance in you too. You can make a change whether it impacts your community or the entire world. No matter how hard life seems, always persevere. You can always persevere with the strength of God and confidence in yourself. Perseverance. What does it mean to persevere and how can you persevere through it all? Perseverance is a very strong word and it is even one of the fruits of the Spirit. Last year was tough. And I mean, very tough. COVID-19 started killing thousands and thousands of people. Some just gave up. They committed suicide or just gave up on their deathbed. COVID-19 killed many friendships, many relationships, and overall killed people. 
Many could not fight to the end or could not persevere. So what does it mean to persevere? Perseverance is the action of standing your ground and going through it even though you know it's difficult or tough. Think of it like this. You're playing a puzzle and it's really difficult and you want to finish it. Not because somebody else is forcing you to, but you want to finish it even though you know it's very tough or difficult. Since we all probably get the definition of perseverance, how can we, as people, persevere? Perseverance. Wow. Since it's a part of the fruit of the Spirit, God. God can help us persevere. Let's say you're having a hard time in school. You've probably heard this from someone or maybe your teachers. If you studied this test, just call on God and He can help you. Sounds familiar? If it does, that's great. Just call on God and He can help you through all your troubles and difficulties. There are multiple situations that you could be trying to persevere. Maybe in school, maybe in your church, maybe in a horrible and cruel world. When you have a problem, it's either you go to the police or the hospital. But if you need help to persevere, they can't help you. The only, and I mean the only, the one and true, our Father God, can help you persevere. A few years ago, I had a problem with speech. It was hard because I was in kindergarten and I couldn't talk correctly or stay focused. My mom brought me to therapy so that I could speak more clearly. I had to go to different therapies because I needed to learn how to communicate. Around the time that I graduated from kindergarten, we came to a therapy in Baltimore, Maryland. I loved it there because the people were so nice and they had a gaming center where I could play video games. My speech therapist who was there for me for a long time got blocks with letters. Then she gave them to me and said a word for me to spell with them and did fun activities to keep my interest the whole time. We went every week and I got better and better at speaking and staying focused. One day, my therapist said that I don't need to go to therapy anymore. Then about one or two years later, I found out that I was good at speaking in front of a crowd. I got speaking parts and solos and plays and for Children's Day at Church. Around one year later of discovering my talent, I got a part in Children's Play for a sermon about Daniel in the lion's den. So I went on stage, did my best. I was really nervous, but when I was done, I got lots of compliments and people telling me I did good. It made me feel confident and want to do it more. I got more confident in myself and that's how I got where I am today. I still struggle with my speech and attention span, but I am trying to get better at speaking and remaining focused. What are you struggling with today? Could it be school, health, or even family issues? Whatever it is you struggle with, remember, you must persevere. Don't give up. God believes in you, and He has a plan for you. Perseverance through it all. What has helped me through it all are my family, friends, and teachers. Another thing that has helped me persevere is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. You have to persevere to reach your goals and be successful. You need to persevere to reach your goals and succeed. I persevered and it got me through the pandemic. There have been a few times I thought I would give up, but I kept persevering. Perseverance is not giving up. And to succeed and reach your goals, you need to persevere. Persevering has led famous people, many famous people, to reach their goals. And it wasn't easy for them either. And that's why you have to persevere if you want to achieve and reach your goals.
Christ, our Savior. Let us worship Christ, our Savior. Let us worship Him. Let us worship Him. Let us worship Christ, our Lord. Let us worship Christ, He's our Savior. Let us worship Christ, our Savior. Hi, my name is Jasmine Adams and I've been at GE Peters for two years. One word that holds a very special significance to me is the word perseverance. Perseverance means to continue in a course of action even in the face of difficulty, no matter how hard it may be. The word perseverance is so important to me because as a young child, I struggled with reading and writing. As a result, I asked if I could participate in an enrichment program that would equip me with the reading and comprehension skills that I need to accomplish the goals I set for myself. And now I'm reading well above grade level and I'm here at the NJHS induction ceremony to tell you that with God and a little bit of perseverance, you can accomplish whatever goals that you may have to set for yourself. My grandpa, who we called Papa, persevered through his disease even though it was difficult for him. He was diagnosed with primary lateral sclerosis, which attacked his nerves and made him weaker. Because of this condition, he went from walking on his own to eventually using a walker. Even though it became hard for him to walk, he still participated in his church activities, attended their meetings, exercised regularly with his trainer, and continued working. He also continued his daily activities, even though he had several falls 
as it became more and more difficult for him to walk. Through all this, he refused to quit. One Sunday halted his daily routine and church activities because he was hospitalized. He was suddenly diagnosed with a certain type of cancer called leukemia in 2014. Two weeks later, he sadly passed away. Although his death was sad, I learned that even if times are tough and daily tasks become hard to accomplish, I should always persevere through it all. Good morning, G. Peter students. My name is Leah James and I'm in the seventh grade and today I will be delivering a speech on perseverance. I do admit that in my life, I have not experienced a lot or any unburdening amount of pain or suffering. I thank God for that. But since coronavirus, there isn't much of a motivation for me to move on with my work. When corona hit, I thought it would really only be two weeks. And I was happy for that because, you know, normally you just like, yay, no school. But when I started to go on month by month, I started to want to go back to school. Mostly because every day is the same. You start to think, I'm getting tired of this. Because when you're in school, different things happen every day. You do a science experiment, the other you get extra time on the playground. I thought my life was boring because of those things being gone. But I saw people start posting pictures of their desserts. So I started making desserts and showing people. I started riding my bike to get out of the house. And I came to realize I was enjoying that just as much as I was enjoying the things we did in school. I couldn't get out of bed in the morning. The elders have taught me that I shouldn't think about right now. I should think about what happens in the future. Talking to my friends was one of the only ways that I can get up and go to school and get my work done. But since then, I found a lot of other interests. I started riding my bike. I started baking. I started focusing on myself more because in the hustle and bustle of going to school every day, you don't really stop to think. I feel as though that was a benefit of coronavirus. After finding so many interests, I, I just started to get more motivated, getting my schoolwork done, and I found my passions. Every storm has its calm, is all the advice I'm giving you. Thank you for your time. Good morning. My name is Jaden Kennedy, and I'm going to be talking about perseverance. This year has been full of change. We stayed at home wore masks outside, and became a lot more aware of germs. I got closer to my family and I experienced a new type of learning. But because of all the time spent indoors, I was not as active as I usually would be. See, I'm a pretty athletic kid and play lots of sports. So being at home inside did not allow for me to exercise and play as I normally would at school. And I didn't even notice. But I got a test of perseverance a few weeks ago when my friends and I decided to go on a bike ride. I went into the ride thinking, this should be easy, I know how to ride a bike. Little did I know, it was going to be 13 miles. Since I had not been outside in a while, it was going to be a lot harder than I thought. Halfway through, I was already beat, but I had to keep going because we were too far out to turn back. I didn't think my body could make it through, but I chose to keep going. Even though I was at the back of the pack, I still pushed through and finished the bike ride. What I learned from this was that even though it is hard, it feels really good to finish. Thank you. Persevering is pushing through obstacles even when it's hard or when you keep going even though you don't want to. In school, for instance, there's a lot of work to do and sometimes I just don't feel like doing it. Right now, the obstacle of this world is COVID-19. We have to persevere through it. This is hard sometimes because everything has changed. We can't see our friends or go outside like we used to, but we can't give up. We have to stay positive and we have to keep going on with life. Perseverance should be something that we strive for. We, we have to look for the light at the end of the tunnel. There will be battles 
victory or defeat it's up to me to decide but how can i expect to win if i never try i just Let's just let it be known that this would have not been possible today without perseverance. Without the perseverance of the schools, teachers, students, and parents, we could not have made it this far today. 
we have all persevered up to this point throughout this pandemic where many are sick dying and away from their families and let it be known that without the grace of god none of that would have been possible thank you for your time Good morning, my name is Shanae Cuffey and I'm going to be talking about persevering through it all. What is perseverance? Perseverance is the ability to keep on doing something even though you may face obstacles. And perseverance can help throughout times of COVID. As we all know, COVID has had a big impact on people's daily lives. For example, millions of people falling into extreme poverty, students not having the motivation to do stuff and getting bad grades, being distanced from the ones you love, and it could also have a deep effect on your mental health. We can practice perseverance by drawing nearer to God, by having faith and trust that he will guide us in the right direction. In life, we may feel like no one understands us and that no one experiences what we go through, but God always understands us and we have to remember that life randomly throws challenges at us every day, even though we may not see it coming. But don't worry, everyone in life has to go through obstacles before we reach our main goal. So remember that practicing perseverance during hard times can help us overcome hardships. There are people who never give up, even if the going gets tough. Multiple people always have something that might or can cause them to give up. But even though those people always find ways to push through those hard times, like thinking about their family or their loved ones. And another way is when they push their limits, even in their or other conditions. For example, the Marlins played the football game even though it was cold and there was no flirt breeze and ice patches on the on the infield. And they won the series. Here's another example. The San Antonio Spurs played in the NBA in finals during the Miami Heat. And no air conditioning. That game is now forever known as the air condition game. These show that no matter what happens, you can never give up that easily because you d won't know the surprising outcome that could possibly happen. This is what perseverance is about. Never giving up. Perseverance is being persistent in doing something despite the difficulty or delay in achieving success. In this season of COVID, where we are locked in our homes without social interaction, many are suffering with mental stress. What does persistence have to do with your mental health? Perseverance helps to protect against anxiety and depression, which is something many people go through today. The more you persevere and stick to life goals, the more you are able to find the good and bad situations and the lower the risk of mental health disorders. In my case, I stuck to the goal of doing my best in school and focused on persevering through one of the hardest times of my life. Having persistence is linked to a greater decline in mental health disorders. The way we perceive situations and respond to them can affect our risk of mental health issues. Even if we don't start out responding well to negative events, we can learn to do so and with practice, make it more reflective over time. People can improve their mental health and experience mental well-being by raising their levels of tenacity or perseverance, resilience, and optimism. As we have been currently dealing with this pandemic, the learning process has changed. And with this change comes some sort of difficulty. What makes a person stand out among the others is how far they are willing to fly, what they are willing to risk, and to what extent they are willing to do so, instead of just surviving, but to thrive. In this pandemic, with being inside all the time, being unable to see friends or family, 
A person could feel drained and blame any sort of bad grade or half-done project on tiredness or mental fatigue. And although I will admit for some time I was like that, accepting okay grades and only doing enough to keep me afloat, now, with the great leaders around me and the year coming to a close, I realize how important it is to keep yourself in check and always strive for the best no matter where you are or the state of your surroundings. And now, as I have made these realizations, I challenge you to take this understanding and make only your best decisions. Good morning, G. Peters. Let's talk about persevering. Persevering through it all. It's not a simple task, but in any situation you're going through, you can overcome. We persevered a lot with school since the start of virtual learning. Since 2020, we have been pushing ourselves to do good with virtual learning, but it has been very stressful for us. What has been most stressful to me is not being able to see my friends, teachers, and family due to COVID. It's hard to concentrate sometimes when I hear and see all of the many injustices in our society. Despite all these issues, we are still able to be together virtually. As a student, it is impossible to achieve personal success without having a goal or direction. What persevered us mostly is God. Always remember that he has been with us through these times and all the time. Thank you. Middle school is a time where you need perseverance. School is stressful, but middle school is extra complicated. You don't really fit into the kid category anymore, but you don't really fit into the teenager category either. Middle school is a transition to high school, which can make the experience stressful. With perseverance and God, you can get through all of those challenging struggles. So instead of watching TikToks all weekend, try to take some time to study. It doesn't have to be a long time, but it's good to start these habits for the future. These types of habits make it easier to push yourself further and persevere when times get tough. The more we persevere, the more it will pay off in the future. It may be hard, but I promise you it's worth it. I've had many tears and sorrows I've had questions for tomorrow There have been times I didn't know right from wrong But in every situation God gave me blessed consolation That my trials come to make me strong Through it all Through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus I learned to trust in God Through it all Through it all I've learned to depend upon His Word I thank God for the mountains I thank Him for the valleys Thank Him for the storms He's brought me through if I ever had a problem, I wouldn't know that God could solve them. I never knew what faith in God could do. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon His Word Through it all, through it all I've learned to trust in Jesus I've learned to trust in God Through it all, through it all I've learned to depend upon His Word Learn to depend upon His Word I learn to depend upon His Word 
John Alberti Jr. received his Bachelor's of Science in Special Education from Alabama A&M University. He proceeded to earn a Master's of Science in Communication Sciences and Disorders from Howard University. Mr. Alberti then received another Master's of Science degree in Education Administration from McDaniel College. He is currently completing his PhD in Educational Leadership at Andrews University. Mr. Alberti has worked in the field of education since 1998, where he started his career in the Fairfax County public school system. He also served as a principal of G.E. Peters for six years. Presently, he is cur currently serving as a superintendent of school for the Allegheny East Conference. In his spare time, he loves spending time with his family, riding and riding his motorcycle. Mr. Alberti believes the most important thing in life is allowing people to see God in him. Greetings. I want to start by acknowledging the administration Principal Jeffrey, Vice Principal James, thank you for having me this morning. Uh, Ms. King, thank you for the invitation to be the speaker today. Um, I also want to say greetings to the parents, teachers, and the board members that are present today. And I want to say greetings to the best students at the best school. So when I received the invitation to be here, I was so excited. I went in my closet, dusted off my bow tie and my blazer and um, started preparing my speech um, because this is the first time I've been back to speak to you, the students today. So my speech today is not going to be a long one because it's not about me. It's about you and your accomplishments and the fact that you're here getting ready to get inducted into the National Junior Honor Society. So. Going back to the beginning when I said greetings to the best students at the best school. That brings me to the title of my speech today, which is what does it mean to be the best? What does it mean to be the best? Now, um, the dictionary defines best as the most excellent, effective or desirable type of quality. Um, and uh, when I was here as a principal, I would refer to you guys as the best students. And I remember people telling me, hey, maybe you shouldn't use that terminology all the time. You don't want to put a, make them prideful or boastful as students. But I, I went back and said, there's nothing wrong with telling them they're the best. Now, why is there nothing wrong with telling you guys that you are the best? One, it's true. And that's not because I'm saying it. It's because it's biblically Base in Deuteronomy 28 13, the Lord says, The Bible says, The Lord will make you the head and not the tail, and you will be above only, and you will not be beneath if you listen and pay attention to the commandments of the Lord your God. Let me read that again. I'm gonna change some words around. The Lord will make you leaders and not followers, and you will be above only, and you will not be beneath. See, God wants you to understand that he created you to be the best. Now, he created you to be the best in the fact that you are following his commandments, that you're following his word, but he has given you the potential to be the best. So hold on to that thought for a minute because I need for you to understand your potential. So, um, so you know, I, I, so I understand that, yes, telling people that they're the best can make them prideful. However, it depends on why they're trying to be the best. See, the Bible tells us if we're being the best because we're following God's commandments, see, that's totally different. It means that we're doing what God is asking us to do, and then we're getting all these blessings because we're doing his commandments. We're following what he's asking us to do. So when, when the Bible says, honor your mother and your father, so when your parents say, hey, do your homework, study for your test, get prepared to make good grades, and you listen to them, so 
see, you're being blessed by now you're being inducted into the National Junior Honor Society because you're following God's commandments. See, God wants you to be followers. He, I mean, leaders, I'm sorry, not followers. He wants you to be the head, not the tail. That's how God created you. In Colossians 3.23, it says, whatever you do, do your work heartily as for the Lord rather than for men. See, it depends on what is driving you to be the best? If you're driven by doing what's best because you know that that's how God created you, you know that God has given you the potential to be the best, you know that you just want to be the best because you want to be the best person that you are based on the fact that you were created in God's image, then that is what God wants you to do. It's when you're doing the opposite, when you're trying to be the best because you want to impress man. See, God didn't put us here to impress man. He put us here to live up to our potential because he, he created us to be leaders, not followers. He created us to be the head, not the tail. You're sitting here today because you're leaders, not followers. You're sitting here today because you're the head, not the tail. You're sitting here because you have given your best so you can be a part of this National Junior Honor Society. So, so, and I know I said I wasn't going to speak long and I'm already at five minutes. So I'm going to wrap this up shortly. So, so being the best is not a bad thing. It's the motivation behind being the best. Being the best means that that it doesn't mean you have the best clothes. It doesn't mean that you have the most money. It means that you're living up to the, to the potential that God has given you. It means that you're putting everything forth. You're putting your best foot forward. Um, you're not half doing it. You're giving your all because that's the potential that God has given you. So if a student does their best, if they give their all and they may not get an A, but they gave everything they could, then they are the best at what they did. See, grades don't always define us as being the best. Everyone is not going to make A's, but as long as we give our all, that is what God is asking us to do. And God will bless us when we're giving our all. Hebrews tells us, or in Hebrews it says that again, we were created a little, little lower than the angels and we were crowned with glory and honor. So I need for you to understand this. When God thought you up, he said, I'm just going to make them a little lower than the angels, but I'm going to crown them with glory and honor. See, you're not just the best because you made A's. You're not just the best because you're about to become part of the National Junior Honor Society. You are the best because God created you and he crowned you with glory and and honor and see that's what you have to remember as you leave these halls of G. Peters and you go on to high school and you go on into the real world you have to define your potential by the fact that you have been crowned you have been crowned with the glory and honor of God see people don't understand that people don't know that they think that being the best is about doing the best that the world has to offer. No, being the best is about being the best Christian that you can be, about giving your all and about doing it for the right reason, not looking down on someone else because they may not have had the grades that you have, not looking down on someone else because they may not have the clothes that you have. Being the best is about being the best as a Christian. And these things like being part of National Junior Honor Society, those are blessings that come from God because you're doing your best as it relates to the fact that God has given you the potential. So, so in closing, I'm going to, to just let you know this in Genesis 11, six, it says, and the Lord said, behold, they are one people and they all have the same language. And this is what they have started to do. And now nothing which they plan to do will be impossible for them. God knows your potential. God said, look, Man can do whatever he puts his mind to. That means that you have the potential to do whatever you put your mind to. You're just now seeing, you, you, you're just here. You have so much potential. You're going to go off to high school and, and, and go from being part of National Junior Honor Society to being part of National Honor Society. You're going to end up going on to college and graduating cum laude and magna cum laude and you're going to do all of these things because God has given you the potential and you can do whatever you want as long as you put your mind to it but don't forget this is not 
It's getting these things is not about being prideful. Getting these things is not about succeeding in the world. Getting these things is about living up to the potential that God has blessed you with. And knowing, knowing that, that, that those blessings come from God, knowing that that wonderful mind that God has given you to study and do well on tests, that that came from God, always putting him first will continue to move you forward to where you need to be. So, um, as I get ready to close, and I know I've said that, but I mean it this time, I want to say that I'm proud of you. I am. I want to congratulate you as becoming part of National Junior Honor Society. Uh, this is the most students I've seen since I've been affiliated with Georgie Peter School that has been inducted into the National Junior Honor Society. And I believe that, that this is just a testament to your hard work, the hard work of the teachers, and the hard work of your parents staying on top of you. So so I know I don't supposed to say I'm proud because people say that sometimes pride is not a good thing, but I am very proud of each and every one of you um, that's here today. Um, congratulations. May God continue to bless you as you move forward. And you truly are the best students at the best school because that's how God has created you. Thank you.